In this video, we're going to discuss two additional approaches to problem solving. The first is analogical thinking or reasoning. Sometimes when you're trying to solve a problem, it can be helpful to try to identify an analogy between the problem you're trying to solve and another problem that has been solved. And that's because identifying an analogy between problems can allow you to use a solution from one problem for another. So in other words, instead of coming up with a solution for the problem you're trying to solve, you can just borrow a solution that has worked for another problem. This is an approach that we use all the time. And here, we're gonna go over a previous study that shows you how powerful this approach can be. So this was a study done in the 1980s by two psychologists, Gick and Hoyok. In the study, participants were presented with the following problem. A patient has a tumor that cannot be operated on. High power radiation will destroy the tumor, but will also damage healthy tissues surrounding the tumor. If you use low power radiation, it won't damage the healthy tissues, but it also will not destroy the tumor. So the question is, how can the tumor be destroyed? Most participants, when presented with this problem, were unable to come up with a solution. So what the researchers did was they then presented them with a story. On the screen, you can see what the story was. A small country was ruled from a strong fortress by a dictator. The fortress was situated in the middle of the country, surrounded by farms and villages. Many roads led to the fortress through the countryside. A rebel leader vowed to capture the fortress. The leader knew that an attack by his entire army would capture the fortress and was preparing to launch a full-scale direct attack. However, the leader learned that the dictator had planted mines on each of the roads. Since the dictator needed to move his troops in and out of the fortress, the mines were set so that small groups of men could move in and out of the fortress. Any large force would detonate the mines, blowing up the road and destroying many neighboring villages. It seemed impossible to capture the fortress. However, the leader devised a simple plan. He divided his army into small groups and dispatched each group to the head of a different road. When everyone was ready, he gave the signal and each group marched down a different road. Each group continued down its road to the fortress so that the entire army arrived together at the fortress at the same time. In this way, the leader captured the fortress and overthrew the dictator. Okay, so this was the story that the participants were presented with after failing to come up with a solution. Surprisingly, after they were presented with this story, many more of the participants were able to arrive at the solution, which is convergence. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see what the solution is. Instead of using a high power laser that would damage the tissue, you can use low power radiation. In the lower power radiation, you would direct it at the tumor from multiple directions. If you use this approach, the radiation will converge at the tumor, so only the tumor will be destroyed, and the low power radiation will not damage any of the healthy tissues. Okay, so this shows how analogical thinking or reasoning can be used to solve problems. Let's now go over another approach, changing the representation of the problem. So after you fail to solve a problem with its original representation, it can be helpful to change the representation of the problem. And there are many ways that you can represent a problem. You can represent the problem as a flowchart, a table, a graph, a list, a math equation. There's many ways that you can represent a problem. So to give you an example of how changing the representation can be helpful, let's take a look at a famous problem called the monk problem. In this problem, a monk sets out at sunrise to climb up a mountain to reach a temple at the summit. On the next day, he leaves the temple and descends the mountain at sunrise. If he travels faster going downhill than uphill, show that there is a point on the mountain that the monk will reach at the same time of the day on both trips. All right, so the idea is that on the first day at sunrise, he climbs up the mountain, and on the second day, he climbs down the mountain, but he goes faster going down the mountain than going up the mountain. 
So how can we demonstrate that there is a point on the mountain that the monk will cross on both trips at the same time of the day? It can be pretty hard to figure this out, especially if you're just representing the problem as a text. If you try to represent the problem using a different approach, it might help. And that's exactly what can work here. So if you take a look at this diagram, you'll see that it can be very helpful to represent the problem as a graph. If you represent it as a graph, you can show on the x-axis the time of the day, and on the y-axis the position on the mountain. So you can see, on the first day, the monk is going to go up the mountain, and it's going to be fairly slow, but the monk is going to get there. On the second day, the monk starts at the top of the mountain and goes downhill, but goes faster downhill than uphill. You can clearly see on this graph that there is a point where the two lines cross. That is the answer to the problem. At that point, the monk will be at that point at the same time of day on both trips. Okay, so that's how changing the representation of the problem can help you solve problems.